When we evaluate functions, the first thing you need to notice is that every function is given a unique name, and we name them by giving them a different letter. So you can see here that I have the f of x function, I have the g of x function, and the h of x, fun h of x function. It can, really can be any letter, um, and every one represents a different unique curve, okay? So when we go, so you have to know which function you're going into. So when I ask you to evaluate f of 3, you have to go into the f function, not the other two functions. Okay, so when I evaluate that, wherever I see an x, I'm going to pl plug in a 3. So that's be going to become 2 times 3, minus 3, following my order of operations, 6 minus 3 is simply 3. So that means that f of 3 equals 3. Or... The point, the x value of 3 and the y value of 3 happens to be on that curve. So let's do the next one. So g of 3 plus 2. So I can take a function and then I can add something on to the end. So if I go into the g function, notice I'm going into the g function this time. That's negative 3 plus 3. I plugged in positive 3 into the g function there. And then I'm going to add on this 2 at the end, plus 2, plus 2. So following my order of operations, negative 3 plus 3 plus 2 simply equals positive 2. I can also have a multiplier out front. So on this one, I have this means 4 times, or 4 being multiplied, by h of 3. So if I write that out, that's going to be 4 times, and now I go into the h of 3 function. So that's 3 squared. Okay, following your order of operations, or PEMDAS, you have to do this exponent first. So this is 9, and 4 times 9 is 36. Okay, the g of 2 function. So this, I can also combine different functions. So here I'm going to combine the g function and the h function. So simply write them all out. So g of 2 becomes negative 2 plus 3 plus and then the h function, so this is 3 squared. So following your order of operations, don't forget to do that, that's negative 2 plus 3 plus 9, right, because we have to do that exponent first, and that simply becomes positive 10. Okay, um, be careful, I'm going to do this other one again, so let's do, um, I'm going to do, what, f of 2 minus um, g of 2, let's say, for example. Okay, so now um, I'm doing that because hopefully you guys are recognizing that if you have a minus sign here, you have to minus everything on this g of 2 function. So f of 2 becomes 2 times 2, oop, too many 2s here, minus 2, minus, and then in parentheses, negative 2 plus 3. So let me get rid of a little bit up here. Okay, so now um, this uh, following your order of operations, we're going to do 4 minus 2. And then I have to distribute this minus sign, right? So this is going to become plus 2 and minus 3, right? You have to distribute that minus sign to everything here. So this becomes positive 2 minus 3. So now following your or, uh, order of operations, this is simply going to just be the number 1. Okay, so be careful. So if you're minusing anything, if you're subtracting anything, you have to subtract everything following that minus sign. All right, so let's do, uh, let's step this up a little notch here. A couple more things we have to do in this video. Um, sorry about this, you guys. <laughs> Mm. Wow, didn't realize these are all separate pieces. All right, so let's do, I can also add functions together. So let's do f plus g of x. I can also do f minus g of x. I can do f times g of x. And I can do f divided by g of x. So the first thing you should notice about this is the thing that's unique about this, these types of equations is, is that these are all variables. There's no numbers here, right? There are no numbers. I'm not evaluating anything. Basically, all I'm doing is simplifying and combining functions at this point.
So if I just want to add the f and g function, all I'm doing is I'm adding the f function and the g function. So let me show you what that looks like. That looks like 2x minus, uh, sorry, minus x plus negative x plus 3. So what I did here is I took the f function and I'm adding to it the g function. Combine your like terms. So 2x minus x minus x, well, that ends actually, and this is unusual, all these x's actually ended up canceling, and this just simply equals 3. So the final answer is 3. That's not um, like, that's not usual. Let me show you on the next example. So let's do f minus g of x. So now I'm going to do 2x minus x, that's my f function, right? And I'm going to minus in parentheses my g function, so negative x plus 3. So now I'm going to distribute this negative and get rid of this, these parentheses, so I'm going to rewrite it. So, oops, 2x minus x plus x minus 3. Okay, so these two x's are actually going to cancel, and my answer, my final answer is just 2x minus 3. So, um, excuse me, f minus g of x is just 2x minus 3. Okay, all, I can, all you can do at this point is just simplify as much as you can and then leave everything else alone. So let me get rid of some of this stuff again. And let me do the next two. So when I'm multiplying two functions, so now I'm going to do this one right here. So f times g. So this is going to be 2x minus x. That's my f function, right? Multiply that by negative x plus 3. So now we have to FOIL this out. Remember, FOIL, FOIL. So I'm going to get negative 2x squared plus 6x plus x squared minus 3x. Combine your like terms. So I'm going to get negative x squared plus 3x. And that is my final answer. So f times g of x is negative x squared plus 3x. And the last one, and this is the one that confuses people the most, but I think it's actually one of the easier ones because you generally can't simplify it very much. So if I'm going to divide two functions, f divided by g of x, I'm simply going to do my f function, which is 2x minus x divided by negative x plus 3. So that's this one right here. And I really can't do anything else to simplify that. So that's my final answer. That's just, you know, f of x divided by g of x. Uh, when you get to ones like this, don't forget, I want to stop here and remind you of domain restrictions. So remember domain restrictions where we say that, um, where we look at our denominators. Remember my denominator, if I'm asking about domain restrictions, my denominator cannot equal zero. So what we do is off to the side, we say, okay, negative x plus 3, we actually set it equal to 0. So negative x equals negative 3, so x equals 3, and what we say is x cannot equal 3. Because if I plug a 3 into this denominator, into x, can you see I'm going to get 0, and that's bad, right? No, no zeros in a denominator ever. So just make sure don't, you don't forget about domain restrictions. So this is my domain restriction. Okay, that x cannot equal 3. So whenever you have a denominator, there are two conditions we're looking for, right? Denominators can, can equal, equal 0, and if we're sticking in the real world, um, which we are for functions, then we cannot have a negative number or a number less than 0 under a radical sign. So if you ever see those two conditions, that's what we're talking about with domain restrictions. Um, okay, so there's just one more thing I want to do, and then we'll be done for today. Okay, so last but not least, um, so you know how to evaluate, you know, f of 2, but what if I say, what is f of 2 plus x? So that's okay, right? Because, you know, when you do f of 2, you're taking that 2 and you're plugging it in for, um, excuse me, for that, um, that x value. So that's f of 2. And that would be positive 2. Wow, way too many 2s. Um, so if I'm going to do 2 plus x into that equation, that's okay, right? Because I'm just going to take this 2 plus x in parentheses or, you know, whatever, and, and put it in for wherever I see an x. So that's going to be 2 
and then 2 plus x minus, in another parentheses, 2 plus x. So now I can distribute and um, use my order of operations, right? So that's going to become 4 plus 2x minus 2 minus x, and that is just x plus 2. Let me do one more of those. Oh, yay, that actually worked. Let's do g of um, 3x plus 1. <laughs> oh, actually, no, I don't want to, I want to stay away from that 3. Let's make that um, 4x. Oops, so let's do 4x plus 1. So into that g function, I'm going to plug, um, I'm going to plug in 4x plus 1, right? So that is going to become negative 4x plus 1 plus 3. So that's negative 4x minus 1 plus 3, negative 4x plus 2. Just simplify as much as you can and leave your answer. Okay. And let me do one more. If you know what you're doing, you can stop the video actually at this point, but I'm going to do one more example. Okay, so let's do... Um, um, let's do h of x plus 2. Okay, so this is going to become, so I'm going to plug in x plus 2 wherever I see that x in the h function, so that's going to be x plus 2 squared, which is x plus 2 times another x plus 2, and that is x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay. So I hope that helps. Uh, let me know if you have questions.